Welcome back to another episode of TCR and in this one I'm going to discuss the journey of restoring this classic mini Clubman estate and more importantly why it's taking so long. So before I get into why the car has taken so long, how about we have a little bit of a recap to when I bought this car four years ago. Back in November 2018, before the world became mad, I agreed to purchase this mini clubman off a young lad called Josh. A couple of days later, myself and someone I like to call my best mate, headed down to Sleaford with a trailer. Once we had loaded the car onto the trailer and begun our journey back home, we discussed the future plans for it. In the end, I settled for a Honda VTEC conversion. But before any of that could happen, I'd have to learn how to weld. Yep, that's right, I bought this car having never picked up a welder in my life. And if you're an avid watcher of this channel, you'll be well aware I'm not afraid to have a go and give it my all whilst learning along the way. Once we got the car home, myself and my girlfriend, Soph, began stripping it down, which revealed a ton of rust. I wasn't worried by the amount of rust because I bought the car knowing it needed a full restoration. Oh, and let's not forget the time I almost wrote it off after building a rotisserie jig for it. The challenges this car has thrown at me over the years have been difficult, but it's only made my skill set stronger and my knowledge for restoring cars better. Anyway, how about we get into why I bought this car and the progress we've currently made. Looking back, I bought this car to continue the channel because if you rewind to when I restored the red mini, um, it was blue when I first bought that and I paid a similar price, 900 for that in 2015. When I started restoring that car, I did the videos just so when I grow up I can basically show my kids, you know, future kids that I've not got yet, um, what I did as a teenager and what I did in my 20s doing this stuff. And it was something to look back on. And then something happened. And that thing that happened was you guys. Comments started to fly in saying, Tom, when's the next video? When's the next update? What's going on with this? Look, looking forward to seeing more. They just flew in and in, and I started to realize that, although I'm doing this for myself, there's quite a lot of people that are interested in what I'm doing. So, I continued putting out the videos, and I did it because I thought, wow, there's people genuinely interested in what I'm doing here. Then I also fell in love with video editing, and that went on and on to great things, and I've done a few great things, and things have calmed down now, but I've not really been giving it the focus. But when the Red Mini come to the end, I was kind of stuck. I thought, where does the channel go? Now, me and my naivety thought, well, um, let's buy another Mini. It will not take me long to restore it, but I want to do everything myself. That'll be stripping the car down, cutting it up, welding it, bodywork, spraying it, assembling it. And I genuinely thought, within 12 months to 18 months, this car would be done and I'd have quite a bit of cash to throw at it due to the ad revenue if, you, if the channel continued to grow. But that didn't happen. What I massively overlooked when restoring this car was the amount of work that it needed to have done to it, and the bodywork side especially. And with producing content and putting videos out on YouTube, I realized quickly that there's only so many videos I can make about welding something on this car. The type of content that this would attract after I'd put a few videos out was Instagram stories, TikToks, and just a short video of like what I'm doing. And this is where things got even harder. I bought a house in Wales to restore and hopefully one day move into. And again, with my optimism, I thought 12 months, the house will be done, and it isn't. Three years I've been going at the house and we're just about to finish it, albeit the garden. Um, so that's had to take priority because obviously I've been paying a mortgage on the house and it's currently a building site and I want to get it finished to take some financial pressure off myself. But, by doing that, this is why this thing has slowed down. With that all said though, things have still been going on with this car. There is a lot of work that I have been doing in the background that I've not filmed, such as completely replacing the rear wheel arches, putting the rear valance on, the rear closing panel, the rear cross member, some patch repairs to the boot floor. And it has taken a lot of time to get this car into position to where it is. And I'm hoping very, very soon it'll be in a position where I can rub it down and get it prepped ready for paint. Now the bit of background's out of the way, I'll show you exactly what I've been up to and hopefully you'll appreciate why this car is taking so long. Knowing what I know now, I would have done things very differently, but life's a learning curve. You move on, you soldier through it, and it only brings out the best in you.
So this Mini had a very good habit of just showing a little bit of surface rust. But obviously once we dug deeper, we found there was huge holes in the car that needed a lot of attention. So this floor you're looking at right now has been fully replaced, patched in areas on the bulkhead just to keep the cost down, although it did create a lot of work. Um, and it got us to a position where we now have a solid floor within the Mini. If you look back at these photos, you can just see how ruined this car was. But knowing what I know now, and I know I said that before, if I'd have done things differently, which I really would, I would have saved up a bit more money and I would have replaced the full floor from tow board to heel board uh, with the cross member in and the tunnel and put it all in, in one. And the reason for that is, see this lovely edge down here? If I replaced the full floor, I would have had four sides to weld. One, two, three, four. So basically left side, right side, front and back and the floor would have been finished. But instead, because I'm a northerner and a bit of a cheapskate, I thought, nope, I'll do it in two halves and I'll get better experience at welding. That did happen. I did get better at welding. However, that quickly went from four sides to weld to eight sides to weld. And then when I had to put the cross member in, that was another eight sides to weld. And then when I had to patch something on the front, that was another four sides to weld. And as you can see, the workload got more and more and it took a lot of time. Now, when watching these videos, a lot of people look at it and think, wow, that's easy. And I do it myself. What you guys don't see is once I've cut a panel out, such as this flitch panel, I've then got to prepare that panel, which involves putting weld through primer on it. It involves making sure it fits correctly. And then it involves welding it in. And then once it's welded, I have to grind the welds down. Then I have to give it a coat of uh, primer, wait for the primer to dry. And then I have to put a coat of seam sealer on it. All this takes time. So this one repair can go from taking a day, if you're in a nice warm garage and the, the primer goes off quick, or a couple of days to three days when you're in a freezing cold 150 pound built shed such as this, and the primer takes ages to go off. Now there are measures where you can try and speed it up, such as using a heat gun to get the primer to dry, but I've found it just isn't the best because when you mask it off to seam seal, all the primer comes off. So if we just switch to point of view mode, I'll go through quickly what this car has had and I'll try and overlay some before and after pictures. So this car has had a flitch panel here and here, both sides. Then it's had some patch repair here that I've carried out on both sides. Then it's had a full floor on this side and the full floor on that side whilst leaving the tunnel in place, which is the central bit. Then if we switch to the back, it's had a full new heel board. It's had some patchwork here on both sides done by myself. It's had some patchwork done on the spare wheel compartment there, which was quite difficult to do and it's not my best work, but it will do. It's had a full new rear cross member. It's had some patchwork on this side of the floor and that side of the floor. It's had a new rear valance a new corner rear valance and another corner rear valance. And then there's also a closing panel that's been replaced there and another closing panel to go here and there. And then to top it off, it's had two brand new wheel arches on both sides. And it's also had these finishing closing panels here. And that's not it. The list continues. Now, when I show you this, this is where you're gonna think, oh my God, surely, surely, you could have bought a better shell. Now, currently the car is on its side on a rotisserie that I made myself. And if I just pop the camera inside, you can see the work that's been going on in here. This is the other side of the floor. That cross member there has also been replaced. It's had new door steps on both sides. And just before I move on to the other works that's been carried out, if I'd have bought a full floor, all of those separate jobs would have been one job. There would have been a lot of work in bracing the car and making sure it didn't move, but it would have been a hell of a lot easier putting the floor in. So if I can offer any advice to anybody, buy a full floor, save up and do it in one go, as opposed to all this. There's also been a lot of work gone on in the engine bay here, but for me to show you, it involves me flipping the car on the rotisserie, which I'll do right now. Now this bulkhead has been fully replaced and this is something that I did off camera and it's been replaced from the subframe mounting points all the way up to where the windscreen goes or if you're American, windshield. This panel 
was a nightmare to replace and is still not finished because of many variants. The first thing that made this panel a nightmare was, was the fact that I bought a bulkhead off another Mini for scraps that was cut out and I had to strip it down to get the panels off that I wanted to use. Now I can hear you all calling, Tom, all Minis rot in the same place. Very, very true. But this car had been stored in a field for many years and had moss growing in it. And the bulkhead was rotten in places that I'd never seen before. But the main reason why this bulkhead has not been finished is because this car is gonna house a Honda VTEC engine. And for it to house a Honda VTEC engine, it requires modification to the bulkhead area. So that's why it's only tacked in in places because it allowed me to get the strength back in where the windscreen's going and I can trial fit everything Thin to make sure nothing's moved before I start hacking away at the car once again. Now, all this doesn't stop there. There has been more work on this Clubman and you're probably starting to understand now why I've been so distant on the channel because I'm trying to get ahead to keep this content interesting. Let me show you this. So as we look inside the Mini, this cross member was replaced like I mentioned before. There has been various patchwork here over there, at the back, those corners, all the back. And if we move to the back of the car now, there has also been work here and it's not finished. The rear doorstep has been fully replaced and that's the top bit, the bottom bit and the closing panel underneath. And as you can see, there's a bit of surface rust returning because I've not been on top of etch priming and seam sealing in this car. The rear quarter panel has had work and this is something that I'm not proud of because I absolutely ballsed it up and I'm gonna have to do it again. Let me show you. I have repaired this rear quarter and as you can see quite clearly, there is some warpage there and that's because I was too impatient and I welded it far too fast and the metal has warped. In fact, it's warped where it actually makes a sound if you press it in a certain area. So I'm gonna to have to cut that off and do it all over again, which means drilling out all the bloody spot welds on here. And I can hear you saying, just put some filler over it. And the answer to that is no, because I'm a perfectionist and I want it done right. But if we move inside the car once again, this is where the work continues for even longer. Let me show you this. If you've been up to date on my TikTok lately, you'll notice that I've repaired these rear companion bins on both sides. And it's not just any old repair. I had to make the panel myself using something called cardboard aided design, where I made it out of a piece of card and then I fabricated it out of sheet metal ready to weld in. And as you can see, with the return of a bit of surface rust, the door steps have also been replaced. These were Magnum panels and they did not fit and they required an immense amount of fettling to get right. Also, the top of the flitch panels, I had to make a panel for here. That's all been fettled, welded and replaced. Some patchwork to the top of the dashboard here, which I'm not happy with, and it will eventually get replaced with this one out of another Mini. And all of this takes time. And it's something that I don't have a lot of at the moment because I'm currently renovating a house in Wales. I have a full-time job where I work 60 hours a week. And another thing I enjoy doing is walking my dog, which also takes up time but I can't complain because I enjoy it and it makes me smile. Also, just look at how cute she is. With that, back to the video. And then I'm also trying to fit this in on the side as well as keep you lot updated. It's proving difficult, but I'm slowly managing everything. Another thing that makes this process take a lot of time is the editing. All that has to happen before it even makes its way into this computer where I can sit for hours tapping away just to make a video. Take this video for instance, this is the one I made about the great British barn find. That was a two day shoot and that was all the way up in York. So I had to travel there. I had to shoot the video, get the gimbal out, set the lighting up, do all that, talk, film, everything. And then in this, I sat, wait for it, for a whopping 45 hours editing this video. So that's a full working week for somebody all for a video that is 17 minutes long. Just look at the timeline on this. This is a 17 minute video. Look at all the cuts, all the adjustment layers where I've had to blur reg plates out. I've done color grading, songs, bit of sound editing, all these splices and cuts. And if I zoom in a bit more, you might see them better. There is thousands of cuts and slices and splices, just everything to try and make this video top notch. 
on average to produce a car video where I'm working, my shoot ratio is one hour's editing for one minute's watch time. On something like that where it's very polished, it can be anything up to two hours editing for one hour's watch time. And there's nothing more soul destroying than when the video doesn't do as well as I feel it should do. Another factor of why things take a lot of time in this garage is because of the sheer size of it. Now you're currently watching on a wide angle lens and if I zoom out, the place feels massive. If I zoom in as far as it will go, it feels smaller. But this is a single width garage and it's a single length garage that I built for 150 quid out of a bit of timber and plastic just to keep the wind and rain off whilst I'm working. But the spaces are very tight. So every time I wanna work on one side of the car, I have to lift it over myself, doing one end at a time and shimmying it around. So I have to try and make the best of a bad situation. And by me saying a bad situation, that's not me being ungrateful because I am more than grateful that I've been allowed to do this at my parents' house. But it's not an ideal situation for restoring a car, but there's a thing that's positive and there's a thing that keeps driving me to do this. And I want to prove that I can produce a top quality restoration with an engine swap out of a poxy little 150 pound garage. Because I want people to say when it's done, you know, did, did you pay somebody to do that? Or did you get it done in a body shop? And I go, no, look, this, this is what I did. It is the picture. It's just, it's not a bragging right. It's just a sense of achievement. Hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into everything that I have to go through to make a video. And it's not that I have to go through, I get to go through that, but it can be quite tiresome at the least. But to end on a positive, we need to discuss what is left to do on this Clubman before we can actually get it sprayed. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna spin the car again so you've got a better view. I have to slowly let it down. In real time this is. Once I have finished the floors, the first thing that I am gonna do is take these inner wings off and put some new inner wings on and get all the front end trial fitted because I want to make it a flip front that goes back on itself, not forward. I want it to go up and back. So I need the panels to do that. But once these are on, this car can be prepped for paint and it'll be one of the proudest achievements that I've ever done in this tiny little shed. So with that said, I really do hope that this answers a lot of your questions about where I'm up to with the VTEC Mini or formerly known as the Turd Tech, which is the name that I started off using and then it kind of died away. But I want this shell done this year and I want to move on with this car and I really want to get it done, finished and gone. I'm not keeping this car, I'm going to sell it and that will hopefully fund bigger and better projects. Just before we go, I want to tell you guys how you can win what is currently in my hand. So a while back, you'll notice that I changed the channel logo from a total car review sign to this lovely logo produced by a friend of mine which says TCR on it. Now, I'm looking to drop the Total Car Review's name because I don't think it really fits with what I do anymore and I want to change the channel to just TCR TV. So, to give back for the first five people that comment on this video saying TCR TV at the bottom, I will send you out a sticker to your address wherever you are in the world for free. They come in black, white or chrome. If I, once I've picked the first five people, I'll reply back, let me know what color you want, email me your address so it's private, and I'll get these out in the post. So, with all that said, I wanna thank you all for watching again. Hit the like button, share it if you do really want to, but um, subscribe or tell your friends, and I will see you very shortly in the next one with more diverse content to come this year. Goodbye. Oh, and I forgot my main hook line then. Make sure you do everything in style. Oh, 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 oh,